Welcome to the Center for the Visual Arts. My name is um, welcome to week two of our art project. So for this project, we are going to be doing a watercolor animal face. So I'll show you an example. I did an owl. In, the project, in this project, we're going to kind of emphasize the eyes a little bit. So you'll learn a little bit about shadows and highlights. So here's our eye right here. And I did an owl. You can do whatever animal you want. You could do uh, like a dinosaur or a cat or a dog or a bird, or you can make up your own creature. You could do a horse or a unicorn. But anyway, so you're going to go in your bag and you're gonna take out week two of your art project. I already took it out and inside of it, it's pretty boring. It's just um, a white sheet of watercolor paper. And I would recommend laying your sheet of paper down uh, landscape wise, so the long way. This is portrait, so this is the the taller version and this is the wider version landscape so we'll lay it down landscape and this will make room for um there'll be more room to draw your eyes on here all right and then we're going to use most of the same supplies as last week so we'll use our watercolors we'll use a pencil you can uh, fill up your red cup full of water and you use your paintbrush you can use a sharpie if you need to this is not a Sharpie. This is a Sharpie. This is a pencil sharpener. So, but you'll need both. And you won't need your um, black acrylic paint for this project. So you can just put that back in your um, white bag or you can set it off to the side. So anyway, we can get started. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to draw two big circles for our eyes. And so what I would recommend doing first is kind of thinking about where you want your eyes to be placed. So I kind of draw these little white marker, um, pencil markers on my sheet. So I'm drawing these two um, markers off to the side of the piece. So um, this will make sure that my eyes don't kind of bleed off the sheet of the paper. And then maybe I'll go down the center and this will be my center point. And then outside of that, I'll do two more markers and then I'll erase the center marker. So then I'll have four markers on my sheet of paper. They'll, they'll be equally spaced. And then maybe like a fourth of the way down between, so I'll go in between these two markers right here and go maybe half of the way down and do another mark. And then I'll go to the center again between these two markers and go maybe a quarter of the way up. So I'll kind of have this kind of marker shape. I know you can't see, so just take my word for it. And then we'll go to these two markers right here and we'll go a quarter of the way down again. We'll do a marker and then we'll go to the center between these two marks again and go a quarter of the way up and do a marker. And these will just kind of be leading points for us. So then I can kind of start to draw in a circle. Now, if you want, instead, you um, you can try to freehand a circle if you want. Um, if you do that, I would highly recommend um, doing a very feather light touch to your pencil. So I would make sure that you're holding your pencil kind of out like this instead of right close to here. So hold your pencil towards the end and do a, a very feathery light touch. So here's my two circles. They don't have to be equal or anything. You can take a household product, um, product too if you want and kind of trace your circle that way. So anyway, I have two big eyes. I know you can't really see them on my sheet of paper, so just take my word for it. And then right below that, we can draw a nose. Um, so if you're doing like a bird, you could do like a, a beak shape, so maybe like a, a weird funky diamond shape. If you're doing a dog, you could do a very round oval shape. I'm going to do a cat, so I'm going to do kind of a, a very fat ice cream cone, I guess. If that makes any sense, it's kind of a upside down triangle that's kind of rounded on the sides. Here we go. And I'm going to draw in some nostrils. Great, so next up is we are going to draw in our pupils, which is the black part of your eye. It's in the very center. So if you look in a mirror, you'll see there's a 
a big black dot in your eye. And this is where kind of, um, it's kind of the window, I guess, if that makes sense. So like light will come into the pupil and that's how you see. So anyway, normally the pupil is rounded for a human, but if you're doing a cat, maybe it's like a, it's like a rounded uh, leaf shape. But when they're really curious, they kind of widen and get really big in circle. So, um, or I'm trying to think of other creatures. I think a, rep a reptile is kind of the same way as a cat's got that kind of that leaf shape for a pupil. You could make up your own creature and maybe they have like a square pupil or like a funky cloud shape. But anyway, I'm going to do the leaf shape for the cat. My cat's very uninterested. So it's not, it's not feeling very playful right now. In fact, my cat, I think my cat's feeling a little vicious and sassy. So I'm going to do the leaf shape. Here we go. And so next up is we're going to do the highlight. So the highlight is where the light is the most intense. So on here we have these little white circles. So that, that's our highlight. So on here, you'll just do two circle. Uh, you'll do a circle and a small circle or any shape that you want. You could do a heart or you could do a diamond. You could do any shape you want. I think I'm going to do a circle and you'll just do it anywhere on your eye. So it can be, um, so I'm going to have my kind of, um, over top of my pupil. It's kind of in the upper part of the eye. And I'll erase the part of the pupil that goes into my highlight. Make sure you draw this part in. So um, we'll kind of try to make sure that this part remains the lightest as possible. So we'll try to make sure that it stays white at all times. And so before we get started um, watercoloring, I'm going to take out my helpful little tool, Mr. Sun. So this is our light source. And you can kind of picture wherever you want your light source. I think the easiest is to start off with is, is doing it from up top. So I'm just going to set my light source right here kind of as a reference. So that means um, the, our light source will hit some spots more than others. So for example, on my face, Mr. Sun is way up here. Um, it's going to, oh, I'm going to take off my glasses with it. It's going to hit the lower part of my eye more than it is the top part of my eye because my forehead's kind of blocking the upper part of my eye. The sun may hit my nose right here, but it may miss my nose, um, not my nose, the part right below my nose right here. So like the mustache area, I'll miss the mustache area. And then the sun will hit my lower lip more than it will my upper lip because my lip kind of folds in. And then it'll hit, the light will hit my the middle of my chin more than it'll hit like the part below my above my chin and below my lip if that makes any sense um because of so like the forehead and my nose and my lower lip kind of come out and set and unlike uh, the mustache area and the lower part of my eye and this indent in my chin so anyway and that's just a little bit of reference. So if you want, you can take out a sticky note or just do it a little sun, wherever you would like your light source to be. So anyway, so when we start watercoloring our eye, we'll make sure that the upper part of the eye is darker than the lower part. So we're gonna try to think about what color we want our eye to be. So if you look at your eye, you have a colored part. So for, for example, for me, my eye color is brown, but maybe for my cat, I want my eye color to be rainbow or green or whatever type of color you'd like to do. I think I'm going to do like a, kind of like a yellowish, greenish color. So I'm going to take a lot of water into my paintbrush and I'm going to lightly dab my desired color. I'm gonna start coloring my eye. I'm going to make sure that I avoid my highlight as much as I can. And I'm going to kind of uh, um, avoid the lower part of my eye because I kind of want to leave that a little bit white because it's going to be lighter in the top part. 
I should mention also um, with your eye, um, you can kind of outline your color around the entire eye because um, I don't really know how to explain it. Um, like, shoot, <laughs> bummer. Ah, uh, let's, yeah, so you can just kind of outline your color around first and kind of leave a giant open area between that outline and your pupil. Goodness, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, just ignore what I just said. Okay, so I got a really light color. So we want to make sure that we um, go from a lot of water to a little bit of water. So if we add lots of water, it's going to be lighter than it is when we add less water. So maybe I'll add a little bit of brown, not brown, orange. I'm gonna add a little bit of orange. We're gonna kind of progressively get darker as we go up. And maybe I'll kind of let that flow into my, um, the lower part of the eye. And I'll do a some funky little lines that kind of um, go around the pupil. So if we look at our iris, which is the colored part of the eye, you'll see these kind of funky lines. So I'm going to kind of outline the upper part of the eye and draw some funky lines. There we go. I want to, I think I'm going to add some green too. So you can get really funky with your colors. So if you're doing a, a, like blue eyes, don't be afraid to try to maybe add a little bit of red or purple. Uh oh. So I'll do a little bit of green up here. So it's, I'm slowly getting progressively darker up here. And you can kind of scribble too if you would like. I think it kind of makes the piece a little bit more express expressive and feel more alive and emotional. Here we go. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit before I get any darker. And I'm going to go right to the nose. So you can kind of think about a highlight for your nose too. So maybe with my pencil, I'll draw in a funky shape and maybe I'll leave that white. And I'll just paint my nostril. And I'm doing purple or like a pinkish color. And I think the top part of the nose is gonna be darker than it is when it gets lower down. So maybe I'll add in a different color to make it darker up here. I always think blue is a fun color for um, your shadows or your darks. So I'll add some blue up here. Maybe I'll add some blue to the eyes too. I'll just kind of outline the upper part right here for right now. And I'll avoid the highlight, kind of go around it. And I should mention you can just go right around your, um, it's okay if you paint over top of your pupil because we're going to take a Sharpie and draw right over that. But if you want to leave it blank like I did, you sure can do that too. It's kind of up to you. Okay. So next we're going to kind of, um, we're going to do the outside of our piece. So what I would recommend is I would take you can really do any color you want. So I think, I'm trying to think what color I want my cat to be. I think I want my cat to be oranges and yellows. So I'm going to take a lot of water again, maybe put in my yellow, and kind of just start kind of scribbling on, on my white space. And what I always find helpful first is to kind of, um, kind of imagine like this like curve down towards the nose, kind of like so. So you kind of get like an eyebrow, I guess. So it's like a really long eyebrow. And this will kind of maybe be the forehead. This is just, I think it's a kind of nice reference. And then maybe I'll paint in this area. 
And don't worry about covering your whole sheet. You can leave in some white, so maybe it kind of looks like some like the highlights of your fur or something. And you don't think too hard about your um, your brush marks. You can kind of get um, make them be really expressive and not think about them too much, so it feels a little more emotional. And right below the eye, I'm going to, um, it's going to kind of look like raccoon eyes, I guess. That's a, hmm, not raccoon eyes, but kind of like, the cat looks tired. I'm going to just draw some eyes to kind of, not eyes, uh, some brush marks to kind of um, look like there's baked in the, the eyes, but there's not. And we'll, we'll get rid of the, ba the, the baby eyes in just a second. This will just kind of help give our cat shape or whatever creature you decide to do. And we'll kind of just go around the eye. All right. And this looks, this is kind of like the, oh, it's the cheek area. So I'll just draw some lines, some brush marks that kind of, hmm. Kind of emphasize the nose so they'll kind of pull out from the nose. Alright, so I'm going to add in some other colors. So I'm going to go to some orange and I'm going to start to get darker. So I have this white space right here and right here. I think I'm going to make that dark, darker because this is kind of the forehead and this is kind of the dark part of the eye, not the eye, the upper part of the eye. So if I look at my if I look at my face and there's the sun coming down from here, it's going to hit my forehead and there's a spot in between my eyebrow and my eye that's going to be kind of darker right here. And I think you can even see from the light that is in, here in this classroom, this part of my skin is a lot darker than maybe this part of my skin. But anyway, so this spot right here is kind of like in between the eyebrow and the eye, so that can be darker. So add some orange. And you do not have to follow these rules if you don't want to. You could just go ahead and go all scribbly around the eyes if you wanted to. I'm going to add in some blue. It's okay to kind of flow into the eyebrow section to kind of emphasize fur. And so this brush mark kind of led into my eye, but I'm just going to leave it. I think it looks kind of cool. Maybe there's little dark pots of fur right in here. Maybe in here too. So I'll hold my brush from maybe through the end and kind of do like really quick brush marks. Maybe there are some down here too. Well, that kind of looks like whiskers. Whoops. Oh well. And I have this space right here and here that's pretty empty. So maybe I'll take some orange or whatever color you decide to do and I'll kind of go out from the, the eye, kind of curves out. And you can go really quick with your brush marks. Maybe I'll do a little bit darker color underneath the eye and I'll kind of lead upwards. Maybe I'll add in some browns too. So you can do really color, um, really, um, really colorful colors like reds, blues, and yellows, or you can do um, really realistic colors. So maybe you're doing like a dog and you just want to do browns and blacks. That's okay too. So I'll just do some quick. Oh, this brown isn't as dark as I thought it would be. Just some quick brush marks, and I'll just go all over. I kind of want this brown to be all over to emphasize that my cat's kind of brown or tabby-ish, I suppose, orange. Looks more like a rainbow cat, which I'm all for. Alrighty. 
And I feel like my eyes are not as dark as they could be, so I feel like they kind of blend into the fur and I kind of want them to pop out a little bit. So I think I'm going to take a little bit more blue and I'm just kind of, kind of outlining the eye a little bit. The entire thing. My lines are a little bit wobbly, but I think that kind of gives the cat a little more energy. I feel like my cat's searching with some power, like maybe my cat breathes fire or has magical abilities. I'm going to add some more orange up here to make it darker. So the orange over top of the, the blue kind of makes it a little bit of a dark color that almost looks like black, but isn't black. It's like a very colorful black. Add some more blue up here. All right, and you can add more colors too. I think I'm going to stop right. I think I'm at a good stopping point, but you feel free to go ahead and add more colors if you want. So our last thing that we will do is we will take our sharpie and we're just going to color in our pupil. I suppose if you really wanted to, you could even take your um, black acrylic paint if you wanted to and paint in your eye. I feel like I have a little bit more control over the Sharpie, so I'm just gonna do that. And I'm just gonna kind of scribbly, scribble inside my pupil. I think it makes it give the cat a little bit more energy so you don't have to color in the entire thing, entire pupil. So like with my owl, I didn't cover, you can see all these blue spots. So I didn't cover in the entirety of my pupil. And I would let this dry a little bit before you do this step, so that way you don't ruin your Sharpie. Cool, all right. And if you want, you can do some other embellishments with your Sharpie too, if you want to outline your eyes or your nose a little bit, you could. Maybe I will right here. Just ever so slightly. All right. And here's my, whoop, here's my cat. I would love to see your project when it is finished. I'm really curious what animals you would decide to do. So I really hope you enjoyed this project and make sure you sign the back of your piece with your names or your initials, so that way the project is yours. I should have said that for the last project too, but you can do that now. But anyway, thank you.